Hello everyone, hope you're doing well today. Um, today I'm going I'm going to make a lecture about basic rook endgames and I'm going I'm going to explain um, you know a couple basic ideas um, how to how to play um, in this kind of positions. You need to know that that according to these statistics this is the most common type of the of the end game rook end games I, I saw some statistics that i think 40 or 50 percent of all end games are rook end games so it is essential for um for every player to know uh how to how to play them so i prepared a couple positions that i would like to show you okay let me let me paste maybe uh, the first position uh here first of all i want to discuss a little bit about the rook finding the minor piece let's start maybe with rook fighting uh look rook fighting the bishop uh, as as you can see at this example and the re you need to know that usually of course there might be some exceptions but usually in such a positions uh the result's gonna be a draw right but of course black uh, i mean black or the side uh has to uh, has to has to think about this how to uh, black has to play properly right the side and what is the best plan uh, to defend the best plan to defend is usually to move king into the corner and move also bishop there and then move your bishop here and back this is like you know a simple simple solution how can you uh, how can you make a draw right so let, let's let's take a look how does it work in practice let's say black plays uh, king g2 okay black goes king g2 Okay, white is going probably to uh, bring king closer. Okay, king is moving into the corner. Okay, white is also bringing king and the bishop is going there. And now black's plan is very simple. It's enough just to move here and back. And white can do nothing actually. Okay, king goes there. You move your bishop. Okay, let's say rook checks you. Bishop goes here. Still the same. And for example... If somehow white goes here, you can see that this is a stalemate because bishop is pinned, king cannot also move anywhere. So this is this is um, this is a stalemate, for example. Let's imagine that white plays something else. Let's say you imagine that white goes there. You can just go to this place, right? And even if what white checks you, king goes back into the corner. Okay. Let's try let's try to think what happens if king goes here. Of course. Uh, you, you cannot you cannot use primos right you cannot make an automatic move bishop here because uh, rook will just take it so of course you have to move your bishop back right if white checks you you, you go back okay let's let's imagine that white is trying to do something else white is trying to remove your king out of the corner what is also possible but then you can just move your king away and 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 this is just a draw okay white can you know White can attack your bishop, you will just move back, right? White can check you, you go there, but nothing really happens because later you can, with such a king at a6, there is no way that white can do something. And if white is trying to maneuver king somewhere else, you can repeat the same story and later you move your bishop uh, into the corner. So you can see that this is like, you know, an, an, an example how, um, this is like a simple plan how um the side with the only with the bishop can make a draw uh, there is also you know you need to know that sometimes for example about endgame uh, rook and the pawn against the bishop usually rook can win somehow but there are some positions especially with the um with the with the with the rook pawn uh let's imagine that position is is let's imagine white's got a pawn there that bishop can also make a draw and the plan is, I think bishop goes there. You can see bishop controls the diagonal. Black keeps king into in the corner. And, ah, okay, sorry, because this is a reversed, reversed board. So white is moving into this direction. Okay, my mistake. So let me put it into a uh, other side. <coughs> okay, let's say that this is the position. Okay, let's imagine that this is the position. Now white is pawn is moving this direction. And this, in this case, this is just a draw because for black it's enough to keep bishop on the diagonal. White cannot remove that bishop out of this out of this place, 
<coughs> and you know after rook d7 black goes somewhere check king goes here and what is the most important thing is that white king cannot enter to this place because it's controlled by the bishop white king can go there but it really doesn't create any threat so uh, yeah okay bishop goes somewhere okay check king goes to a7 and you can see that this is also just a draw okay so 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 those are let's say bishop 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 against the rook now let's take a look uh, knight is fighting against the rook let's take a look at, at this position and you need to know that usually knight against the rook it's also a draw but knight has to follow some principles there are not there is no like a simple plan that uh, you just move your king into the corner it, it doesn't work but it's enough to make a draw a key thing is to keep your knight close to your king you cannot move your knight away because you may lose this knight so you have to let's say black goes there okay let's say white checks for example okay king goes to um, king is king is moving somewhere okay let's say here right even if white goes there okay you you have to keep your knight close to your king this is this is a very important thing and white okay white can try different things white cannot do that much right it's 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 gonna be just a draw probably right so this is like a, the most important the most important thing uh, and but of course there are some examples that let me put another position that you can see that king is away from the knight and that actually might be kind of a problem uh, because uh, what is what is th this is the only chance for the rook to win this kind of position and that chance if rook wants to win this rook has to trap that knight right so rook leaves that king away and the rook is trying to trap that knight take a look at this knight it cannot go there it cannot go there it cannot go there it cannot go uh, okay it can go only to this and this square it's that square is also not available so uh, what is the correct plan? Black has to maneuver with the rook and stop knight from from um, and stop somehow knight from uh, moving close to the king. Okay, so for example, rook goes to h3. Now take a look. I control a lot of squares right now, and you can see that also it's not possible for the knight to move there because there's a, there is a fork. So okay, so knight has to. Where that knight can go it's over right because okay king king goes there there is a checkmate as you can see if king goes for example here rook goes here there is a pin and it's and it's over right but also if you imagine position that knight is let's put the knight into a different place let's imagine that knight is i don't know here right still you can see that knight is far from from the king the plan for the rook and the king is similar take a look knight cannot go to those places okay so black probably has to move rook there and now you see knight cannot go to any of those places right okay knight is trying to move back okay let's say knight goes there and now it's just you know rook is just hunting uh for the for the um, for the knight okay knight goes there okay well probably probably even kinky five you see so knight knight cannot go to any of those squares of course going into the corner is not good so let's imagine knight goes there king goes here and you can see knight will never escape out of the trap okay and i think that right now even rook b2 okay knight has to go here and now king goes to d3 and now take a look knight is completely blocked white's king is away and in the next move black is just going to <coughs> bring rook to b3 and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be over so this is this is the plan for um this is the, the this is the chance for the rook to win against the knight that's the uh that's the that's the idea uh, okay so 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 remember that usually it's a draw i mean minor piece against the rook but sometimes there might be some exceptions uh like like for example when knight is away from the king also what you need to remember about you have to remember that uh, we are talking about positions without pawns because uh, if pawns are on the board like if let's say there is a rook against bishop and both sides have got let's say five pawns 
it's a completely completely different story and usually rook can uh, can win this but but today we are talking about some basic ideas so now let's discuss rook against the pawn this is a very complicated uh, i mean pretty complicated uh, end game uh, so let's let's take a look okay let's take a look at this position uh, black pawn is moving into this direction to make it clear okay and you can see that usually you need to know that that you know rook can win because of course we are discussing the the, the position when rook uh, that white's king is quite away because uh, if white king is close to the to the pawn it can easily together with the rook can block it and and can can get this pawn but so it's a battle rook against king and the pawn and that king is like coming back right and th this is the question is rook uh, able to to delay pawn's promotion so king can come and there are like a different different positions take a look that pawn has got only two squares into the promotion but because this is a uh, this is a rook pawn it's win actually white can win this position because white can go there okay black plays there and white goes king b3 and take a look uh, at this point okay what 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 is going to happen if black promotes there is a checkmate here uh, you can see it's a it's a it's a it's a checkmate right so the only piece that black can promote is the knight and usually knight can save the game i mean like every other pawn except the rook pawn because right now king can just go here and you can see that knight has got a problem to move somewhere okay knight has to go there you can you can just move your knight here you see because that knight hasn't got many places to to to, to go here here and you can see that this is hanging and also there is a threat to play rook e1 as you can as you can see right so this is when such a position happens and it's a it's a it's a rook pawn usually rook can win of course if if that king would be let's say in the into let's say in this position this is of course easy draw right this is of course easy draw because that pawn can just move move forward uh, okay another very similar example is when there is another pawn uh, okay okay i cannot paste it but 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 position that i wanted to show you is something like this okay and if we talk about such a position let's imagine black is to move so pawn is moving forward king is coming this is a very similar story just this is not a rook pawn okay here here of course b1 queen is not that good because because there is a checkmate so black has to promote the knight right king goes somewhere and now king can go there right because because this is not a rook pawn it's gonna be a draw and knight is close to the king right okay white can you know white can white can check but then king goes king goes here knight is moving away and this is like the case that we already uh discussed uh so this is this is like uh, another another uh position okay another idea that is also it's really good to know that idea it's something like this you can see white pawn is moving into this direction and you can see that black king is far away and take a look in this position because there is only one way for black to win this because take a look if you imagine somehow that black king is moving back right white king can move forward uh, let's say king is moving back you just push your pawns forward right you can see this is the race uh, let's say king goes here and now king is not moving here because king can come but there is king f5 king is using the idea called shouldering uh, if you have seen uh, my lecture about pawn end games there is an idea uh, i explained that idea in the pawn end games but you need to know that this is a very common idea uh, that that you can meet also in other types of the of the end games for example in the rook end games right and let's imagine that the rook goes okay let's say let's say rook checks king goes g6 okay king is coming but then h6 right and you can see king e6 king g7 and you can see this is this is just 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 a draw here okay 
check, king f8. Here king goes to g7. That king cannot help. And in the next two moves, white is going to uh, promote that pawn. Right? So, so this is going to be a draw. So you, you need to know that this is not a good idea for black to bring the king. But there is another tricky idea that is possible if, if there is a rook pawn like this. And that king is one, two, three, four, five, five ranks from the from the promotion. So that idea, black can move there, and you can see that the rook cuts off the king, uh, so king cannot come and help this pawn, as you can see. Okay, and pawn has to pawn has to move forward or something like this, and you can just you can just bring your king. Pawn is moving there. And now you can see that the gap between pawn and the king is pretty, pretty, pretty big. So you just use your rook, right? You go there, rook is attacking the pawn, so pawn has to go move forward and the rook goes behind and the rook uh, can win this pawn. So this is like another example. Uh, how can you, uh, how can you get this, get this pawn, right? But you need to remember that uh, it's, there must be some conditions like king, uh, there must be, King has to be five ranks from the from the promotion at least, and the same thing is it has to be a rook pawn, right? Because with this pawn it's slightly slightly different story, because after such a move, king will go there, right? And it's gonna it's gonna be probably a draw. But we are going to discuss also such a position. Okay, uh, let me put another position on. Okay, so take a look. This is this is the next position. You can see that that pawn is moving into that direction. Uh, but take a look. If you move your if you move your pawn, for example, you are not going to um, you are not going to make a draw there, here because king will come. Okay. If pawn goes forward, of course there is rook here, and the rook takes this pawn. So 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 black cannot even think about playing this move. And after, for example, such a move, there is check. King has to go somewhere and king is coming. Right? You can see pawn is moving forward, king is coming. Okay, king protects this pawn, and then for example rook g7 and the rook can win this pawn in the in the in the next move. So 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 you cannot use this plan, right? Also, you need to know that a bad idea <coughs> that a bad idea would be to move your king first, because similar story is gonna happen. I mean king. King goes back, and after this move, rook goes here, and you can see that that king is going there, king is coming. So also white is winning. So what to do? How black can make a draw in this position? Because there is a way, and uh, okay, maybe so, some of you already know what is the best solution. The best solution, of course, is to go king e4. And king is, as you can see, that idea I mentioned that already showed there. Right, so you can see that that white's king cannot come. Okay, and let's imagine rook is rook is going here. Okay, and you just go there. King is coming to d4, and now you play here. And now you can see that even if rook checks you, there is a big difference because king is not at f4. Black's king is already at f3. Right, that shouldering king, black's king was blocking white's king from from coming closer. Okay, white can come there. But this is this is this is too late. Okay, check. King goes here, and you can see it's not possible, not possible to stop promotion, and we've got a draw. Right. So shouldering is a very very common uh, idea. Okay, if you wanna if you wanna make a draw. Um, okay, let me paste the next position. Let me paste the next position. Okay, so this is the next position black is going into this direction okay and you can see you can see that uh rook is uh white rook is like can attack it from the side right can at uh, can can attack it from from you know it's blocking pawn from moving forward but what white can do to win this because take a look if white's king will come here black is going there you know king is coming but pawn is going there and you can see that there is a problem Mm, there is a problem because white cannot advance their king and it's a very serious problem because okay even if white goes there king is coming king goes here 
fun is coming and you can see that this is gonna be <coughs> probably a draw right okay even after check king d7 okay this is not gonna help okay king d5 even probably okay doesn't lose but black can promote right black can promote and white has to take a draw by making a skewer probably and and yeah we've, we've got a draw here as you can see uh, so the question is let's go back into the starting position the question is what idea white can uh, white can use to win this position <coughs> okay uh, right now because white is expecting that that king is going to wait and try to shoulder this white has to pick a different route right white has to go in a different way and the only way to avoid shouldering that stops white white's king from coming is to move from the other side right so in this position king has to go there pawn is moving forward king goes there and you can see that black's king cannot block white's king from coming this direction right so uh, okay let's say pawn moves forward king is coming King is coming closer. You can see this. This was. This is also a very common idea if you wanna if you wanna win. Here, King is coming here, and you can see that this is okay. Here, here, and you can see that that square is blocked by the rook and by the king. So, so yeah. So this is an example how white can. Uh, what is a good idea for white to uh, win, right? You just move your king into a slightly different direction, so black's king cannot uh, cannot cannot block you, uh, cannot cannot shoulder you. Okay, and let's also do one last position, w one more very common idea, uh, uh, another very common idea, uh, how white uh, can win this position. That pawn is going into that direction. Okay. So you need to know you need to know one thing. Let's take a look. If if let's imagine you move your king closer, uh, pawn will come. Right? Take a look. King is coming. Okay, pawn is going forward. Here, pawn is moving forward. King is coming here. King is coming. King is almost there, but then king d2, attacking the rook and also promoting the pawn at at the same time. So what white has to do? White has to get one team paw and white has to make like an in-between check. So take a look. White is going here. White checks the king. Okay, king has to go somewhere. Let's let's say king is moving there. And now rook goes here, attacking the pawn. King goes there. And now there is uh, the same, it's not the same. I mean it's the same position. The difference is that rook is already at e1. And that makes a huge difference because now if you move your king closer, black is coming forward, white is moving back their king. Okay, here, here, there is this, this is a huge, huge difference. Okay, black has to move that one forward, king is coming there. And rook is not at c1. So, so, so rook is not at c1, so king d2 is not that good because white will just take this pawn here. So this is another very common idea in, in, in this kind of end games. It's, it's like uh, in between check, right? You are doing in between check to move your rook into, into a better position and um, yeah, just to, just, to, just to win this, right? So, because if you go directly, okay, pawn will move forward and this is gonna be a draw. Here, I think it's going there here and you can see that nothing can stop black. This is why that in between check is so important. Um, okay, okay. So, so we discussed a couple, couple ideas here. Uh, we discussed when pawn can make a draw. We discussed shouldering. We discussed in between check. We discussed that sometimes if, 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 if the side with the rook wants to win, can pick, king can pick the other way. So at least, I mean, after this that lecture, you should, you should at least know, you know, a couple of new, new, new ideas, right? How to play in this kind of this kind of position. Um, okay, good. So now let's discuss a little bit um, because we discussed, you know, rook, rook against the minor piece, rook against the pawn. So now let's discuss um, maybe rook and the pawn against the rook, which is another a very common thing. 
and you see you need to know okay let me paste the first position okay <clears throat> so this is a very very famous position uh, it is called feeder position and you see i don't want to i don't want to discuss all of the things right in this position because you need to know that there are books uh, about about the, this this kind of endgame rook and the pawn against the rook there there were books written uh, so it's not so easy to you know to explain this position in in a couple 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 minutes even uh, but i want you to understand one idea there is one very important idea uh, in my opinion the most important idea how to make a draw it, because take a look if if it's um how black can make a draw in this position because okay if white is to move of course white can go there and this is a skewer right so you can see that of course black is to move and black um uh, the most the easiest way for black to make a draw in this filider position is to go there and rook takes control over the sixth rank and you take a look so for white it's not possible to move king forward here first because if that king can move forward, very often white can, can win this position. So what white can do? Okay, white can check the king, but king will just go there. Okay, rook is coming here, king will just go back. Nothing really happens. So if white wants to dream about winning this position, white has to push that one forward. And this is exactly what black was waiting for. Because after such a move, black can move rook behind and then it's a it's a perpetual check white cannot hide rook is coming there and as you can see white cannot hide from uh, from checks let's say king goes there you take a look another check king goes somewhere check check right a lot of let's say that white's king is trying to do something white's king is going there take a look, check king is coming closer but in this case i think you can even just go here and attack the pawn and this is this is of course a draw right so this is the most important idea of this of this filider position it's not you need to know that this is not the only way to make a draw in this position there are also other theoretical ideas but this is this is the easiest way remember control that sixth uh sixth uh sixth rank in this case uh, what you need to know, and this is of course, you need to know that if we think about this position, let's imagine, and if it's blacks to move, you can use the same idea, but now you can move your rook here. And that rook controls here. So now it's a, it's a fifth rank, right? But the idea remains the same. So, so if pawn goes forward, you just move your rook back, and then you can just check the king, and you can see that it's, it's, it's going to be a perpetual check, very similar way like, like in the previous position um okay good so this it was the fill leader position okay basic thing about fill leader position so now let's discuss a slightly different thing when um because fill leader position what is special about fill leader position is that you know uh, the king of the side that has got only the rook is in front of the pawn but sometimes it also happens reverse situation that that king is somewhere else and that king is in front of the pawn and we call it Lucena's position let's let's even take a look this is this is Lucena position right that that king is away and that king is in front of the pawn and there is a very famous pattern how to um, how to win this kind of position because the side the white white can win this kind of position it, 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 there are a couple steps um, to win this position and I'm gonna expl explain right but this this is this is Lucena's position and it's possible possible to win uh, okay so first step is rook has to maybe I'll show you moves and and explain rook has to rook has to go there and rook cuts off black's king because so black's king cannot enter in front of the pawn because if somehow Take a look. If somehow white doesn't pay attention, white goes there. King is coming there. Okay, you can see. I don't know. White even goes here. King is going here. Rook is going there. Okay, let's let's say black goes here. Okay, rook can go even here, and we've got a similar story like in the in the position. 
right after this move that king is in front you will just go go back and then uh, check white's king and it's it's not possible to win this is why it's so important white in the first move white has to uh, move rook here so it's not possible for king to move in front of the pawn so this is step number one okay so black is let's say black is waiting okay second step is white has to advance that pawn of course that would be great if white can promote but it's it's not possible so white has to advance the pawn to that square of course you have to be very careful so you king has to go there because king has to protect this pawn all the time black checks king is moving forward okay black goes here pawn is moving forward okay black can just wait black can do nothing else white is going there right king cannot come because that rook is here and that rook is is is, is blocking the king okay so let's say check king is moving forward okay very slowly here pawn is coming okay black is waiting i don't know black is going there here king is going there pawn is coming here let's say king d7 uh okay so this is this is this is uh this is second step right so first step was rook cuts off the king second step advance your pawn into the seventh rank okay third step is you have to um, you have to remove uh, that king you see there has to be two files between king and the pawn so usually you can do that by checking the king and right now king has to move away because if king doesn't move away if king is coming closer there is this maneuver that you can move your king here you try to promote if black captures there is a check king has to go somewhere and rook goes here and you can see that we have got a skewer here right and, and you can take the rook and white is of course winning this is the reason why king usually has to move somewhere else okay so this is step number three rook cuts off the king two files from the from the pawn and why is that important you, you, will, you will see later why that thing is so important. Uh, it's very important to, to keep that king away from, um, from that pawn. You will see why. Okay. Next step, and this is step number four, you have to place your rook uh, on the fifth rank from the promotion square. So if this is the promotion square, one, two, three, four, five. So rook has to go to this place. Okay. Black is waiting. Black can then do cannot do much let's say black is moving rook something and now this is the last step the last step is called uh, bridge you have to make that idea uh, that very famous idea that is called bridge so take a look you move your king away okay rook checks you you move your king here rook checks you you move your king here you have to protect this pawn rook checks you you move your king here right you see this is you're moving king into this direction and after check now you can see that you can use your rook you can put your rook in between right and you can see that in the next move black can capture king captures and nothing can stop pawn from the promotion uh, and this is why it was so important for um for for to to move that king away from this pawn because if that king if you do some exactly the same thing but that king would be at d7 king can just simply go to c7 and grab this pawn this is why it's so important to um, this is why it was so important to to move that king away right because king is coming there you can just promote and this is way right? so this is this that idea is called uh the bridge right so five five steps rook cuts off the king move your pawn closer into the i mean advance your pass pawn then rook cuts off the king two files from the pawn set up rook on the fifth rank and the last thing is called the last step is called the bridge um okay uh next thing there is also one thing we call it big bridge by the way there is also a case that is good to know that is called um that is called a small bridge because let's imagine the case that black will try to interrupt you and black will try to attack your rook Right, so what you what you're supposed to do because you cannot move your king away because king will just grab the rook and then rook takes this pawn and we've got a we've got a draw here. Uh, yes, and so so in this position 
uh, it's 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 like you have to do something that is called a small small bridge uh, okay so you just move your rook there okay let's say let's say you see there are still to to or you can move it here but also you can move it maybe it's even better if you can move it here it's you can do the same on the first rank right but okay king is king is like coming here and you can just go there and you can see that even if rook checks you you go there and you can just move your uh move your move your pawn here right so this is that's the um that's the uh, small bridge as as you can see right but that small bridge you can usually use when uh, king is um when king is trying to interrupt you into that thing uh, okay i see a question mm. Ah, okay so okay i see i see the question uh, so I, the question is what happens if that rook will be on the on the first rank as i mean from the promotion square take a look it's not a uh, usually the best position for the rook is to be behind the pawn so take a look if 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 black somehow let's imagine if black will go there trying to bring rook here okay you can by the way you can check the king to move, keep it away and you see rook is not going to block that pawn right because rook in front of the pawn is usually it doesn't matter is rook attacking or is rook uh, defending this is not a good place because you know you can just promote that pawn without uh, any 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 bridges and things like that right so that's the that's the thing so those are like a very important ideas that you have to you have to remember when it comes to the rook and the pawn uh, against against the rook uh, okay, now let's go into the next position. I hope very high answered your question. Um, okay, let's let's let let's go back into the next uh, position. Okay, so this is the next position. As you can see, the next position is probably more mm, more practical, right? Because we were discussing positions only, you know, with with without pawns or with one pawn. And this is this is a completely completely different position. You need to know. <coughs> okay, what what do you see in this position? You can see that white is up a pawn. White has got one pass pawn that is here. White is moving, of course, into this 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 uh, into that side, um, into this direction. And uh, how white should play in this kind of position. But also, I will try to explain you what is the best way to to defend and what is the the, the the way you can you, you can defend here okay first and basic principle that you have to remember that for for either for white but also for black the best position is to be behind this pawn so white the best position for the rook if rook is supporting that pawn is to go behind and support this pawn from the back this is definitely the best position right uh, like the worst position is to be in front of the pawn I know that that might look strange uh, because because I remember when I saw it first time I wanted to move my rook you know here here and I wanted to move my pawn advance my pawn and I it was it was pretty good but this is not a good way of playing and I will explain you why and the similar thing and you you just need to know that in the medium right middle middle is like rook from the um, from from this this from the from the side so like from my from the my practical experience. If rook is behind the pawn, uh, it's like 99% of, of, of it's 99% chance that white wins. Of course, there might be some excepts, exceptions. This is why I leave that 1%, but it's it's 99% that white wins. If rook is in front of the pawn, usually usually it's a it's a draw. And if rook is like from the side, it's like you know 50-50. Sometimes sometimes. Uh, Sometimes white can win, but sometimes there can be a draw, right? So that's the, that's the thing. But you also need to remember that that if if it's black's to move, black should have give a check and also move rook behind the pawn, so white cannot uh, move rook there, right? So that's the that's the story. Okay, so let's discuss three options. Okay, first of all, let's discuss the option that rook is coming there, rook is moving, you know, behind the pawn and there is like a very simple idea to move, push that pawn forward right so of course black has to bring that rook back 
Okay, and what is the plan? First of all, both sides, I mean, white has to bring the king closer. Another side is mo moving king. Similar, similar story. King is coming. King is coming. King is coming. King is coming. Okay. S next step uh, is you have to block pawns on the on the. This is the best thing you can do. You have to somehow manage to block pawns on the king side, because um, because you are going to use that pawn as a decoy and you are going to attack those pawns. So it's better if they cannot move. So for example, you go there. You, for example, play f4, right? Of course, that would be great if black goes here, but black usually will try to go like something like that, and black will try to mm, will try to move king in front of the pawn and try to use that rook for for the defense, right? So you have to be quite quite accurate when when you are doing that. And now the next step, when everything is blocked here, you just move your rook somewhere here and try to use that rook and. Um, attack pawns together. Rook and the king, they are going to attack pawns on this side. So uh, what 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 uh, what black is going to do here? Let's say that black is going to go there and I think you, you can go rook e5. Okay, take a look, you are attacking that rook. Okay, rook after exchange, of course this is easy win, so rook goes back. And now I think it's a it's a you can even start bringing your king closer. At the same time you can see that rook blocks that that king, so king cannot come closer. Okay, let's say rook goes c6 again. Okay, king is king is going to d4, right? You are leaving that pawn. Black can take this pawn, but white is going to take a couple pawns on, on this side. Let's say black checks, king goes there. Okay, let's say black goes. Okay, I don't know, black is, is waiting somewhere. You play f5. Okay, and somehow finally black managed to, to get a pawn here, right? So black will get this pawn. Okay, white moves king somewhere, and but even if black takes this pawn, you can see that this position, even if for a moment it's equal in the material, uh, this is this is like an easy, easy win because you go there. Okay, king goes somewhere. You take this pawn, <coughs> um, and you see black cannot protect this. Black cannot protect this pawn even after this move. There is rook g5. Right, check. Okay, you go you go here. White is winning this pawn. Even if king is coming closer, now you have got the end game two pawns, uh, two pawns or against against uh, two pawns and the rook against the king and the rook, which of course is is win, right? Of course, a good idea is to go there and the rook cuts off the king, right? So king cannot come closer, and this is of course easy win because king and two pawns in practice, in you know. King and two pawns are fighting against the rook, which of course is very easy win. Uh, a couple times it happened to me that after all of those complications on the king side, I had got only one pawn left, so it was something like this. So, but I was able to use that uh, bridge idea, right? I created this is like similar story to this Lucena's position. So, if you remember that five steps plan, you can you can use it exactly exactly in this in this position. Okay. So you can see that usually in this position, the best move for white is to go there. So now let's discuss what happens if that rook will move in front of the pawn. Let's say white checks and rook is coming there. Okay, of course for black, the best strategy is to go here. Rook checks the king, rook goes behind and white is moving forward. Okay, black rook can go to a3. It's just, you know, a move to, to... Black is basically waiting, but black wants to um, control control also that, that, that f3, f3 square, so king cannot move forward. White is coming there, let's say black is waiting, let's say black goes h5. And now there are two cases that we have to analyze. <coughs> White has got two plans to win. First plan is to push that pawn even more, but this is usually an easy draw, right? And second second plan is to uh, that white will just give up those pawns and will move king forward, you know, towards this pawn and try to promote it. Okay, so let's discuss maybe the first scenario that pawn is going there. And now you need to know that this is like as easy 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 uh, easy draw but you have to keep your king into one of those squares. 
you have to keep your king in one of those squares. You don't move your king somewhere, let's say here, right? You just, black has to wait. And that's, that's everything black needs to do. So black is just waiting because white, okay, waiting, let's say king goes there. Of course, it's not a good idea to capture that pawn because rook will move somewhere and pawn is promoted in the next move. So, okay, black is still waiting. King is coming closer. And in the moment when king touches that pawn, you just check. So king has to retreat and rook goes back. And there is no way, you can see that that rook is tangled, right? It's not possible for this rook to move somewhere. King is coming, check. And you go behind. And that's it. There's nothing white can do in this kind of position. But very important is to remember to keep your king in, into one of those two squares. So this is this is one thing. Uh, also, you need to remember, because a couple times in my life I have seen that, you know, black wanted to, you know, be smart and black wanted to move king towards this pawn, right? Which is not a good idea, because if you move your king there, white has got a nice trick here, and rook is coming there, you can see that uh, we have got a skewer at this position, which is not good, of course, okay? And also, I also another another mistake that, that I saw a couple times in my life, that you are moving king here. This is also not a good move, because rook will check you, king moves somewhere, and then white can just um, just promote here and um, yeah, basically, basically, <coughs> basically that that's it, right? So this is why it's so important to keep your king into one of those two squares. Okay. Mm. Okay, and now let's discuss second scenario. Second scenario is when white keeps king here. So there is one square in front of the pawn that king can hide. So now white is trying to make a maneuver, maneuver the, the king somehow towards that pawn. But you need to know that this is extremely risky plan for white because white can even lose uh, such, a, such, a, such a position. Because take a look, king f1. Rook is going there, rook is trying to block that king, king is coming here. Okay, let's say black is black is black is waiting. Let's say white goes h4, black is waiting. Let's say that king goes there. Rook now rook can take this pawn because pawn is not on the seventh, right? So 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 it doesn't make sense for white. White cannot promote. Okay, so king is let's say it's coming, it's coming somehow closer. Okay. Rook has to let's 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 imagine that uh, rook is coming back. For example, king goes to b1, rook is moving um, somewhere back, king is going there. And now, what is the key thing in this kind of position? Now it's going to be the race, because white, sooner or later, are going to move king somewhere here and promote this pawn. Black cannot stop it, but black is not forced to, do. you know, black will not wait. Right? Black wants to create some kind of counterplay on the other side. Because now black has got most, most, more pawns here, and now king can move. Okay, let's imagine king goes to b3, king f5. King is coming, let's say rook a1, king is coming to b5, and king is coming there, right? And now, okay, let's imagine white plays rook c8. White, white, you can see white is going to promote this, that, that thing. I think king can just take it. Okay, white, white, if white plays king b6. Probably white is going to lose even because after this move, there are too many pawns. Too many pawns. Okay, maybe not lose, but you can see that there are a lot of pawns and it's not going to be easy for white to to make a draw here, right? King has to go back, but I think that in this case it's it's uh, yeah king g3. Okay, here and, and, and probably king f4, you know, shouldering if you remember that idea. Okay, and we, we've got a draw here, right? In this in this case, um, okay, rook is where rook is going somewhere. You take takes g2. Okay, rook f5. Yes, you can as you can see you can see this is just this is just a draw, something like this, right? So uh, yeah, I know I played it quite fast, but but you know I want you to understand the idea, right? What is going on on the on the board, and. Let's imagine this is this is the reason why it's not a good idea for white to, to, to move directly. Let's say white goes rook c4. 
And rook c4 has got two ideas. One idea is to protect this pawn, so king cannot capture that. And another idea is white wants to go there, for example. So black still has to be very, very careful, but black, I think, can go f5. And after this move, okay, there is a check, because it doesn't make sense to capture. Check, king goes somewhere, rook goes here. a7, rook goes even to a8. King b7, I think you can take it. Okay, king takes, and now black is moving forward here. So, to be honest, uh, to answer the question, what's going to be the result, you can just take a coin and flip it, right? And it's going to be, uh, <laughs> you never know, but usually, usually, um, usually it's a draw, but there are some cases that black can even win, right? So this is, that's the, um, that's the, that's the story. Um, okay, so this is what happens if rook is moving. Let's go back to our, to our starting position. This is what happens if black is moving to, um, into the uh, in front of the pawn, and now now let's briefly discuss what happens if rook go, goes here. Of course, black is moving behind the pawn. Okay, and 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 now in this position, let's say white plays h4. What's the what's the point? Uh, black is trying, of course, to deal. You know, because if white can somehow move king without any problems in front of this pawn, that's going to be a big problem. This is the reason why that rook has to block the king and also black has to create some kind of counterplay with those pawns. So, and also that rook will attack that pawn, for example. So let's imagine white plays, I don't know, here. Okay, I think black can, black can even go like, uh, even probably rook a2 would be pretty annoying. Right? Uh, king goes here. Okay, you can move king g7. King is coming here h5 okay. king e3 okay and now for example you see that that king will go there but white doesn't want to give away this pawn right so white will play rook f4 in the next move because white wants to protect uh, that pawn here so in this case black plays for example f6 and the idea of f6 is that if white goes rook f4 trying to protect that that pawn and so king can move and have this pawn Black has got counterplay by playing g5, right? So, from my experience, it's like 50%. It's 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 uh, it's a win for for the rook. 50% it's a it's a draw. It all depends on some on some details, right? Uh, on some on this specific position. So this is about this is about uh, when the rook is from this side. So so I hope that that this end game that you will remember that the best position for the rook is behind the pawn doesn't matter is it supporting that pawn or is it blocking it and the worst position for the rook is um is um the worst position for the rook is in front in front of the uh of the pawn uh, okay before before uh, i also would like to discuss one one more uh end game but before i do that uh just one thing because if you want to be informed about my uh, lectures and so on you can you can join the newsletter you can also see the the, the 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 website you can you can sign up for the newsletter on the on the screen but i also send the link on on the chat so you can um you can sign up there and and uh yeah you will get informations about about my lectures um yeah the next lecture is gonna be probably next week Right? And, and if you if you if you if you uh, sign up for the newsletter, you will also get a free ebook. Right. So uh, anyway, but let's 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 discuss let's discuss also the, the last position. The last position it's I wanted I just want to explain you one thing. Okay, let's discuss positions. What happens if there is a rook endgame and pawns are on the uh, one side? So what what's gonna happen? Okay, you need to remember one thing that if pawns are on the one side, if there is two against one, usually it's a, it's just a draw, right? It's not a big problem to make a draw. You just you just keep your king safe. White can advance those pawns. It really doesn't matter, right? You can you can you can just keep your king away from checks, right? You just wait and this is this is just just a draw. White cannot do much, right? Because it's very hard to uh, to stop from checkmate. This is this is a very simple 
very simple draw, right? When there is the more, and you need to remember the more pawns are on the board, uh, the easier it is to win, right? So for example, if you imagine, let's go back into the starting position. If you imagine such a position, three against two, this is also a draw, right? The most important thing for black is to keep king, uh, keep king safe. So for example, stop it from, from, so white cannot check that king and black should try to exchange pawns. And this is usually a draw, right? That, that kind of position is also usually a draw. I tried, I, I played it a couple times, uh, OTB and online, and I think that, that, that only like once or twice I, I was able to win this position, uh, three against two. Usually it's very hard. But you need to remember that uh, white is trying to create kind of a pass pawn and move king forward and, you know, use also rook. And the other side is trying to exchange pawns, right? Because the less pawns, the better for the for the weaker side. Okay. If if there are if there are four against three, you need to know that here the case is slightly more complicated, because because white has got four pawns, and now that position is like I would say like again 50-50, right? 50% 50 chances that white will win this, 50% for a draw, right? Of course, plan remains for white the same. White is trying to move king forward. I would show you maybe a couple moves. Um, king is coming there. Let's say king is going. Okay, rook is blocking here, right? Black, of course, is trying to exchange some pawns. And, 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 okay, let's say black is waiting. Black is waiting f3. And usually white is trying to create some kind of pass pawns and also uh, use an active, an active rook. And this is usually the idea. And, you know, again, I had got, from my experience, I had got some cases that I remember once I played this kind of endgame against another OTB game. It was Rapid, I think, uh, and I won it, right? I, I had got four pawns, but I remember the same time I played against the Grandmaster and I, and I lost it, right? So it's like uh, <laughs> a lot of things can still happen. And you also need to remember that if there are more pawns on the board, if there are, let's say, five against four, usually it's win, right? The more pawns, because white white is doing the same plan. White is trying to advance the king, advance pawns, uh, create pass pawn and use the active rook, right? Because those are those are the most important thing. And in this case, uh, white is, is usually five against four. You, of course, you know, it depends on this, on the specific position, but usually this is just a win. So that's the um that's the that's the thing um okay anyway you see uh, we're supposed to discuss some basic rook end games of course this is not those are not all rook end games that you should know but i hope you learned at least some of good ideas today and you will try to use them into your your games um yeah the next the next lecture is gonna be uh next week uh probably it's gonna be on tuesday but it's gonna it's gonna be at the same time. Um, yeah, okay. What what can I say? Thank you, thank you very much for watching. I just want to remind you about you know sign to sign up for the for the newsletter. Um, yeah, what can what can I say? Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we are going to make a right to somewhere someone and uh, yeah. Hope to and to remember that tomorrow there is like a standard standard stream think like an international master so i'm gonna play some games with the with the explanation um yeah that's it anyway thank you thank you very much for watching and hope to see you uh next next time bye